all, welcome to the second episode of Time and Timing from Kolsar. I'm Kishan Shinoy and uh, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about something which is near and dear to everyone's heart, namely time error. And uh, something associated with time error, which is often confused with time error, but it's time interval error. And I'll try to make clear what the difference is. When you talk about time error, we have in the back of our mind a clock, which is under clock under test, and it's being compared against some ideal reference time. So uh, we can imagine that the, the output of a clock is a waveform, which is typically referred, you know, considered to be or usually depicted as something like a square wave with some idea or like a clock edge defining a particular event. So if this is the clock that we are examining and trying to decide whether it has a time error or not, in the background there's the reference clock, which we'll assume has a similar kind of uh, waveform. And uh, it has its... significant events shown as rising edges of the clock. And the, this difference can be viewed as the error between the two clocks. However, to consider it to be a time error, they should have started at some point where the time error was zero. So we normally assume that an integer number of cycles may have gone through between when they were first in agreement to this first measurement that we make. So this you can think of as say epsilon sub n where this is the nth cycle or the nth event being looked at. So the next time error would be epsilon of n plus 1 meaning the next in the sequence and so on and so forth. People with a DSP bent will recognize immediately that uh, a time error is necessarily a discrete time sequence. So you can think of a sequence, epsilon n, which represents the error or time error between the two waveforms, the clock itself and the reference, and uh, the difference would be epsilon n. So this is time error. How about time interval error? Now just think about the following situation where that we're using these two clocks and we are, both of them are measuring the same event which has a certain duration. And if the duration is nominally n cycles of the clock and it in, in, encompassed say n cycles of the two clocks and the error in measurement of the duration of that event would be the difference between the error at the starting point and the error at the end of the interval edge, assuming that, that it's roughly n cycles. So time interval error then is of the form epsilon n plus n minus epsilon n. You'll find that in the literature on uh, timing, there are numerous metrics which are, have been devised, which are actually metrics on time interval error. And what this constitutes is actually how different the clock and the reference are on a cycle by cycle basis. It doesn't take into account any absolute time or when they started. So you have uh, some common metrics, you see the the acronyms are MTI, or Maximum Time Interval Error, and TDEV, which is Time Deviation. Maximum Time Interval Error can be viewed approximately as a peak-to-peak -peak error of the tie, and Time Deviation can be viewed as the root mean square of this difference. So you're looking at more like a standard deviation 
and that's where the dev comes from. Uh, in the next series, that's uh, in talk number three, we'll try to give some example, at least one example, of what the impact is of this kind of a time error. Uh, you may see some nomenclature which comes up, and I'll just write them down here. One is jitter, and the other is wander. Both refer to time interval or time error or time interval error, depending on the application. But jitter represents the higher frequency components. Wander represents the lower frequency components of the same sequence. And the traditional demarcation point is 10 hertz. So anything above 10 hertz is considered jitter. Below 10 hertz is considered wander. So more next time. Thank you. <laughs>